Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 24th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can clearly see the development of the mid-latitude cyclone off the Pacific Northwest, undergoing rapid cyclogenesis here, bomb cyclone status, which is a 24 millibar drop in a 24-hour period. It's a legit scientific term, not meant to scare you here. It just marks what kind of pressure drop the system is undergoing. There's more energy back here that's probably going to round the trough and make another system impact the Pacific Northwest here as we go on into the early and mid portions of this week. So we'll take a look at those details. We'll take a look at what kind of wind speeds, what kind of precipitation we can expect. And there's actually some convective activity here Monday and Tuesday we're going to be looking at as well. Looking at SeaTac, 64 degrees, 5 degrees below average. Had a bit of rainfall there yesterday, 0.15. We're up to 0.85. We're about halfway there to the normal precipitation for September. And we're going to be be making some big dents in this deficit here and probably get up over that average precip for the month of September as we go towards the end of the month. This is if you want a nice affordable home weather station, click on that link down below to save 10% off. And Shepard, you won the latest drawing. Please contact me by noon today. Otherwise, I have to move on down the list. There is a little bit of a time crunch on these giveaways. Now, taking a look at the strong gusty winds this weekend, you can see Southwest Oregon, some of the coastal ranges here in the immediate coastline, maybe up towards 50 miles per hour. Down trees and power outages are possible with any a strong winds early in the season you know it's been a long dry summer for some areas here so yeah the first winds of the season can bring down more trees and branches and cause some power outages that might not normally occur as you get later on into the fall and winter months there's also a red flag warning here these atmospheric rivers don't bring a lot of moisture east of the cascades and there's going to be some fire danger out there also you can kind of see it highlighted here elevated risk across southeast oregon and creeping into western uh Idaho there. And this would be for Monday morning on in through Tuesday morning. So here we're looking at the European. You can see that low pressure system dropping in pressure till about, what, about 11 o'clock tonight, 959 millibar low. It's going to look glorious in the satellite imagery. It already pretty much does. Atmospheric river into the area. And then the secondary system here as we go on into the day, Tuesday, Tuesday night. And this one gets a bit closer. This could cause some breezy, windy conditions here across some of the Pacific Northwest as well. We'll be looking at those wind speeds in a moment. This is something interesting here. So we got two meter dew point. You can see Alaska, BC, Washington, Oregon there. And you can see clearly see the warm sector of this mid-latitude cyclone as it approaches the coastline. It brings that rich, moist air up in front of it there. And you can see the low pressure spin and bomb out off our coastline. And then the next system out here as well, you can kind of see it bringing that dew point temperature up in front of it, the warm tongue in front of that system as it moves in towards Vancouver Island, northwest tip of Washington. So kind of an interesting look at things there. This is going up in the atmosphere a bit more. This is temperature at 5,000 feet. You can clearly see the low pressure system here. And then you can see the next system there, Bear Clinic boundary kind of forming on that boundary between the colder air spilling out over the Gulf of Alaska here and the warmer subtropical air to the south. And you can see the next system spin up off our coastline here as well. Now looking at the European, again, this is the same thing here. So we'll just go through it one more time so you can kind of marvel at this system. Look at this deep low up towards Haida Gwaii and then the next system rolling in towards Vancouver Island. Looks like I showed that one twice, but here's the GFS now. Let's see what it shows. You can see pretty similar. Look at 959, pretty much spot on to what the European is saying there as well. Atmospheric river. Let's see what it shows for the secondary system. You can see that wave move up the Bear Clinic boundary into the Oregon coast. So if this comes in a little bit stronger, it's going to come a little bit further north. The stronger and deeper these lows, the, the more north they tend to curve. And that could bring uh, higher wind speeds across some of the interior of western Washington up the Washington coast towards Vancouver Island also. So we'll be watching that. The European shows it a little bit deeper and a little bit further north. And we'll watch that as we go over the next couple of days. And this is looking at the NAM 3 km You can see that low churning and spinning off the coastline here. You can see the model kind of cuts off right here. We can see that low pressure out there. And what I'm looking for here is that secondary low development. You can see it there right at the end of the run starting to develop here right off the Oregon coastline here. What kind of track is that going to take? That's what we'll be watching closely here as we go. This would be about Tuesday afternoon as that system is approaching. This is surface-based CAPE, so check it out. We destabilize as we go through the day Monday and clearly see some of this CAPE moving up over the area there. And some interesting profiles here as well. We could get some rotating storms as these move across the region. And, you know, it's hard to storm chase around here. So you kind of have to just go somewhere with a nice view, sit and wait and hope that one moves over your area. But look, as we go through Tuesday, again, we're going to destabilize quite nicely across much of the region as well. Thunderstorm chances will be out there. Maybe some small hail also. Taking a look here at the HER 3KM. 
and this shows the surface base cape here also you can see that monday burst and then again tuesday we start to destabilize a bit but this only goes towards tuesday morning there but we're going to destabilize on tuesday also and take a look at the water temperature out there you can see they're pretty warm off the coastline just kind of relatively speaking here this time of year water temperatures can be in the mid and upper 50s even approaching 60 degrees here just off the coastline so that can actually fuel some of the thunderstorm activity and it can actually help promote water spout potential along some of the coastline as well now, taking a look at this sounding, look at this, I pulled a tornado sounding here across Northwest Washington. You can see the unstable profile and the nice turning in the atmosphere, which shows up in the hodograph here, a big looping low level hodograph there. So interesting stuff here. You might get some rotating storms and some lightning strikes out there, some small hail. And if you're really lucky, you might see a funnel cloud rolling around somewhere across Western Washington, Western Oregon, up into a British Columbia. This is now looking at the total precipitation in inches on the GFS. Everybody wants some some rain we've been dealing with some drought here across the region you can see SeaTac getting some nice amounts but there are some rain shadow there is some rain shadowing going on across some of the Willamette Valley north of the Olympic Mountains of course the coastal ranges are going to get higher amounts the Oregon coast and then that secondary system you can kind of see it moving in there bringing some additional precipitation but look at you, know, you can see why the fire danger is going to be going on out there across some of the southeast Oregon not much expected these atmospheric rivers are pretty low level and they run into the terrain and really ring themselves out but you can see some impressive totals here as we go on and towards the end of September. I mean, SeaTac showing up at over three inches here on the GFS, lesser amounts for the Willamette Valley, but of course the higher trade, including the Cascades, better totals. And this is looking at the vertical cross section of an atmospheric river. You can see it's about 3,000 kilometers. So what about, you know, 10,000 feet or so? These are not very uh, tall most of the time. So these really ring out when they run into the terrain, leaving some big rain shadows on the leeward side of the mountain ranges. This is GFS, Seattle, 24 hour totals. Look at the control run up towards two inches on the, the latest as of last night. You can see the mean is up over an inch for a 24 hour period here, but the European shows something different. That first system, you know, maybe six tenths of an inch and then better amounts with that low pressure system that dives in towards the coastline here. So some pretty good disagreement between the European and the GFS and just how much rain is gonna come across some of the area here as we go through the day tomorrow. This is Brookings, though. Look at the European talking about a three inch precipitation total here for a 24 hour period. Some of the ensembles up towards four inches as well. Nice atmospheric river. Vancouver Island also. That control is up over three inches, 75 millimeters. So, yeah, impressive stuff rolling into Vancouver Island. Also, pretty windy there. I mean, great storm watching up there if you happen to be on the Vancouver Island coastline. Heck, the Washington, Oregon coastline as well. Now, this is looking at Quileute. Check it out. You can get some gusts up towards 50 miles per hour at the first system, and then the next system, depending on its track, could bring some strong winds to the coastline. Also, this is Hoquiam, some nice gusts up into the 40 mile per hour range. And even on the coast early in the season, again, this can cause power outages because of those trees have been dealing with maybe some drought, maybe some insect damage. Who knows what's been going on during the summer, but pretty calm period. And yeah, when we start to bring the first winds of the season can cause those power outages. Seattle, Tacoma, kind of blustery with the first system rolling through here. You can see some of these getting up into the 30s, but the potential for a little bit stronger wind actually exists for that secondary system. If it dives right in the northwest tip of Vancouver Island, could cast an interesting gradient across some of western Washington and create some power outages also, especially if the trees are not doing well across the area. This is Newport, uh, Oregon coast. You can see a couple shots of wind rolling in here as well. This one will be on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And this one is from the big system out there spinning up right now as we go through tonight into tomorrow morning. Portland International, some gusty conditions here. Nothing too crazy, but again, you could get some nuisance power outages from these winds. National blend of models. Let's roll through. This is for today. You can see we are generally seasonable and staying around in the 60s here. And maybe a little bit of a bounce back here as we go through earlier October. More on that here in a moment. But yeah, nothing too crazy. No big heat wave right now. But we're going to look at the European air in a moment. It shows an interesting solution as we go through October. And heck, the GFS shows it as well. But six to 10 day precipitation outlook, you can see above average signal here and West Coast <clears throat> all the way through October 3rd. As of now, below average. I have a hunch this is going to start changing here, the extended run over the next day or two. And you can see why if we look out into the European, look at this kind of the ridge building here and these heights increasing as we go through the early portion of October. Might get some nice weather here for the early portion of October. And this is looking at that European ensemble mean as of last night. You can see the deep low out over the coastline there. Secondary system rolls through. Troughing hangs out for a couple days, but then we start to build the ridge. Look at the signal as we go out through early October. Maybe we'll get some nice warm days here. So yeah, we'll check that out 
over the next few days as well. GFS, let's see if it agrees. Put it into motion, deep low. Secondary system, little swing through there. Troughing hangs out for a couple days. And then we start to build this ridge over the Gulf of Alaska, potentially warming us up a bit here. And if we're not too moist, it should keep the fog away for the most part. But we'll we'll see how that goes. You know, we have plenty of time to watch that for now. But kind of an interesting signal for maybe a bounce back in some of the weather. Here we're looking at the drought monitor here. You can see extreme drought across some of the Cascades, Western Washington. There's severe drought for Seattle Metro and getting close to Portland there. And they introduced this extreme drought. So hopefully we can erase this pretty quickly here with this atmospheric river and these couple of systems rolling through the area. And this is looking at a percent of average precipitation for the last three months. You can see just how dry, pretty exceptionally dry we've been here across the Cascades and Western Oregon, Washington. And you can see where Tropical Storm Hillary tracked up across some of the Southwest in towards Nevada. And this is temperature. Yes, we've been substantially warmer than normal here across the Pacific Northwest for the last three months. But anyway, yeah, interesting system there. I'm probably going out to the coast here on Monday to watch some of those showers roll in here. And there's some big waves arriving also. And in fact, why don't we just go ahead and do this? I'm just going to scroll out here and we're going to click on the European wave map. Do a little special thing here. And you can kind of see this. There goes the system out here. You can't miss it. Look at these huge waves. This is maximum individual wave height. And you can really see these start to arrive as you go through Monday afternoon. Washington, Oregon, coast, Vancouver Island, western BC. And then we start to relax as we go through the day Tuesday. But yeah, interesting stuff. Might get some good waves, Cape Disappointment or something out there. Still haven't decided exactly where I'm going to go. And it depends on just how potent some of these thunderstorms are going to be to where I'll set up. But anyway, um, yeah, hope you guys are having a good day out there. And uh, click like and subscribe. Check out my El Nino video as well. I released that last night if you haven't seen it. Um, go ahead and leave some comments below and I'll try to answer questions as I can. I'll probably do a live stream at some point this week coming up so I can do some Q&A also. Yeah, and I'll do my normal briefings tomorrow. Keep you guys updated. So I hope you guys are having a good day and I'll talk to you tomorrow.